that? Look at what behind us. Are we, are we in Thailand? Are we in... You have this cool street art here. It reminds us of Penang very, very much. Just like that, it's time to call it What a long journey. <laughs> There is this town in Phuket that you need to see and we are going to show you why you should. It feels like we're not in Thailand. It feels like we're back in Malaysia right now. <laughs> Never expected to find this in Phuket. Walking around Phuket really makes us think that this is Phuket's gem. Yeah, so we can't really say it's a hidden gem because there's a lot of Instagram spots and it definitely is a potential for it to be very crowded, but it's not like the party atmosphere you think of when you think of Phuket. You have this cool street art here. It reminds us of Penang very, very much. Uncle making... Yeah, it looks like he's making like an oyster omelet or this other dish that we might be showing you pretty soon. It's also famous in Phuket. It's very cool, very same style. We love it here. Wow, this spot really making us feel like we are in Malaysia. <laughs> like we are in Penang or somewhere else. Yeah, wow. during peak tourist time, because there's a lot of people here taking photos. This is beautiful streets. Look at that, look at what behind us. Are we? Are we in Thailand? Are we in Phuket? These old shop houses are so colorful, like, wow. I swear, this area is making me fall in love with Phuket just, just here. Like, I don't even need to see the rest of the island right now. I just, I love it here. <laughs> I'm just a sucker for this kind of architecture, colorful buildings, like, it's... It's my kind of place. This is our third time in Bangkok. It's because well, always... It's in Thailand. I mean, sorry, in Thailand. Third time in Thailand. It's because, you know, Phuket is always is a turn off for us. Yeah, it has that reputation. You know, when we hear Phuket, it's like, oh, Phuket. But, yeah, but man. Like, we didn't know this place existed until a few days ago. Exactly. stop by at this cool looking ice cream shop in the middle of old Phuket and wow it feels so good in here because it's also cold and it smells delicious with lots of pastries and ice cream that's Greg getting our ice cream I had to rock out with the Thai flavors. 
rolling the dice with this one, this Ming Kam. It's like, it looks very interesting. Tai Chi, I know, is going to be good already. Oh, yes, it is. Let's try this Ming Kam. Oh, that's good. It's like lemongrass, lime leaf flavor. Mm. Savory, kind of spicy too. Pair that with the Tai Chi. It's like eating a meal. How's the Tai Chi? I mean, uh, what is that one? Mushi or something? Yang Kam. Mm -hmm. Tai Chi too. It's perfect Tai Chi flavor. Not too sweet. I like it. They'll be happy with this Thai pairing right here. And mine, this is what I got. I got almond espresso and dark chocolate. You always all get dark chocolate favorite. every time. All time favorite. All time favorite. Dark chocolate, so dark. There's chunks of almonds in here. Mm. Nice. That's really strong coffee flavor. It's actually not sweet at all. Really strong. I'm gonna boldly tell you, it's one of the best coffee ice creams I've ever had. And I eat a lot of coffee ice cream. It's very good. So she really has a strong espresso taste. I'm an espresso lover. Mm. Damn, that's bold. The almond chunks too, really good. The flavors here have like the old shop house buildings, colors to match the name of the flavor. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Then, Very cool. Yeah. It's so cool. I, love I didn't it. even expect that. It's a nice detail. Oh, wow. Oh, there's the street art we just saw. Look at this. Black beer, interesting. Rose, a vodka. Whoa. Mm. Wow. This place is so, this ice cream shop, it's so delicious. So you get a try. Thai vitro. In here. Thai vitro? Vitro? Vitro. This is the kind of night market you get pre-COVID, but at this time it's just full of uh, local tourists and it's amazing. It's Sunday and people have, I think people have no work tomorrow because everyone's here maybe, but it's just a busy place to be in on a Sunday night. <laughs> it's a very good combination. Too good. The pandan flavor is amazing. Too good. He said too good. Pandan and coconut milk. I love it. I love it. I can eat like 20 of these, no problem. 20. Easy. They're so light. <laughs> they're like kind of salty, but like not too sweet either. because this one like passed through uh, from generation to down to her generation so her aunt like back in the day work in the palace so this one is like a royal ditch basically wow. royal snack this is like a royal snack it's like a royal snack right? appetizer for royal like king family. royal wow. family yeah to eat it you feel it too you feel the quality you feel the oomph, like you feel them. <laughs> the the, the oomph because they're like it's full of herb in here. Wow! After hearing that, I'm even more excited than I already was. Just watching her make it by hand, very special story, and just even smelling it, it smells healthy. I feel like I'm getting healthier just from the aroma. It's wrapped in a beetle leaf, all these ingredients: ginger, dry shrimp, shallots, lime, chili. Mmm. <laughs> There's so much going on in here. So many flavors and textures. You got spicy, sweet, sour, tangy, earthy, crunchy texture, like peanut shallots, chilies, lime, ginger. It's insane. I feel like this is a really healthy snack. I could really eat a few sticks of this. Incredible. 
So I just came back from the trip in Chiang Mai, and when I was in Chiang Mai, like the big night market there, I don't see this kind of food. Really? It's not actually. It's not like a typical street food. Wow. It's not like general street food you can find anywhere. I grow up in Bangkok. I never see anybody sell this kind of food in street food, like as a street food at a market in the market. You know? Yeah. So very, very unexpected. Yeah.